بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ وقفا و سلام علیہ بعد الزین استفا وی جسٹ ہرڈ دیٹ سوشل میڈیا ہیز اے اسپیشل لائکنگ فار کنٹروورسیز سو اٹس پروبلی لاجیکل دیٹ دا پروگرام آن سوشل میڈیا از فالوڈ بائی اے ٹاک آن سم کنٹروورشیل سبجیکٹ Uh, how many of you have heard that music is a very controversial subject in Islam? H- how many have heard that? Just that many? Yeah. Be frank. <laughs> how many of you actually think that yes, music is a very controversial subject? One, two, three. So for, for the majority, it is not a controversy at all. Yeah. Actually, in a way, music is really a very controversial subject. And my talk today is only about that part. I'm not going to deal with the entire issue of music and Islam stands on music. It is a, compre- it's a very comprehensive subject that requires a book-length answer. And I have written the book. For those who are interested, you can pick up... Uh, this book, Slippery Stone, inshallah, go through all the arguments based on Quran, Hadith, Fiqh, as, uh, discussions of the ulama, historical development, etc., 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 arguments for, against, uh, the, the discussion, etc. But in this talk today, and it's going to be brief, not very long, inshallah, I just want to uh, focus on this issue, the issue of controversy. Because, although dictionaries do not explain it, and they do not mention it, but for many people, controversial translates into do whatever you feel like. Everything goes. You say, brother, this is haram. You say, don't say that. Music is controversial. You cannot say it's haram. And they would quote the people who have actually have heard from the ulama, from heated discussions on the subject. So I'm going to bring just those, the, the position of those who actually have contributed some heated discussion on the subject. The fact is that on the surface of it, music is certainly a controversial subject. But if you dig deeper, and that's what I have done in this book also. And that's what I'm going to do in this uh, uh, talk, inshallah, inshallah, right now. If you dig deeper, you find an amazing consensus underneath that conflict. Underneath that controversy, there is a huge consensus. And that is never mentioned. So there is basically an open and clear dishonesty that is going on. It's munafiqat. That people mention... A statement of, say, Imam Ghazali. Imam Ghazali supported Sama. His brother, Ahmed Ghazali, is very forceful, using very strong words in supporting Sama. And then we forget the conditions that they put on that conditional permission. Because those conditions changed everything. If you look at those conditions but that they proposed, they said, this is permitted, under these conditions. And what you say? What people say is, they said it is permitted, and forget the conditions. This is a hypocrisy that's going on in the entire music debate. So I'm going to first show uh, some very heated statements, uh, and then I'll show what they actually were proposing. Just, I'm concent- going to concentrate just on those. What Imam Ghazali said, what his brother Ahmad Ghazali said. He was even more of a Sufi and he wrote the very strong worded statements in support of Sama. And I'll quote from from Abdul Ghani Maqdisi, a a later scholar who also has written in support of Sama and uh, defending whatever Sama was. So Ahmad Ghazali and you have to know, Ahmad Ghazali was a very dedicated Sufi. 
uh, to the extent that it is reported that he did not even pray behind his brother Imam Ghazali because he said that he, he did not feel that uh, the, his, his heart was in the right place during the uh, prayer. He had this kush for something that he thought that Imam Ghazali was thinking of uh, some fiqh issues while praying. So he used to say, I will not pray behind him. That, that was his mindset. He wrote in su support of Sama and he wrote, وَلَا يُنْكِرُ السَّمَا إِلَّا عَامَ الْقَلْبِ عَدِيمَ النُّورِ كَسِيرَ الْحِجَابِ غَافِلًا عَلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مَائِلًا فِي النَّفْسِ وَالْحَوَى Only he disapproves of Sama who is blind of heart, lacking in light, thickly veiled, neglectful of Allah, Ta'ala, inclined to the nafs and desire. So he's talking about something, Sama, which was to be a very serious religious experience. And he is saying that anyone who actually disagrees with that actually has all this problem. He, it is the opposer of this Sama who actually is following his desires. Marin ila nafsi wal hawa. And nafs and hawa actually have overtaken him. He also says, he who says that Sama is absolutely forbidden must acknowledge that the Prophet ﷺ did what is forbidden, looked at what is forbidden, and provided tacit approval for what is forbidden. If that flutters in anyone's mind, he is an infidel, kafir, by consensus. Very strong words, right? What he is actually defending is, the, what he is basing on is the permitted things that the Prophet ﷺ did. And, and he is using that to actually justify his Sama. But what is this Sama actually doing? Sama is audition, the Sufi audition that was meant to actually increase their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, this, this Sama, uh, actually, uh, uh, I'll co uh, read his words. This is the audition of this party and he's only approving this Sama, uh, Sama of the Sufis. What is this bent for? What it is this, what this thing is? That the audition of this party is a reference to the observations of strange secrets in the delicate poems which the Qawal recites while joined to the ecstasy, the bajid, which arises in the heart of the Gnostic. So he is talking about strange secrets, kashf, and turning their heart solely in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result, he says, for well, this summer, there are conditions. First thing, that this sama requires, it's absolutely necessary that there is a condition of time, place, and brethren. It is not allowed at every time. It is not allowed at every place. It is not allowed for every one. In fact, the people he actually is allowing for, the group of people is very, very limited. He says, the Sama is not meant for the common Muslims. You're out. If you wanted to actually justify your listening to music based on him, you're out of luck. He said, this is not for the common Muslims. It is not for the youth. He also says that. It, it is only for those Sufis whose heart is totally turned to Allah. And he actually says that this, there are three types of people. In uh, Ikhwan, he says, Zaman wa Makan wa Ikhwan. And for Ikhwan, he says, the Ikhwan are Ikhwan fil ism. Those Ikhwan who are only in name. He says, uh, Quran says, so, Mu'minin are, are ikhwa, brotherhood, that, that is just in name. We are not talking, giving permission for this sama to them. Then he says, Ikhwanul Irada wal Mahabba, these are the ikhwan who are the supporters of Sufis. 
contributors, they pay them, they take care of them, so he is giving some room, some latitude for them. And then he says that Ikhwan safa and Mawajid, these are the real Ikhwan, these are the Sufis. So his entire support, his entire defense is only for this select group of Sufis, the real Sufis. No one else is allowed, sorry. Then he says time. It is not even for them, it is not allowed all the time. It is only t allowed when their hearts are very clean, serene, very uh, peaceful. And he mentions actually in detail in, in this uh, uh, Risala, he actually has given a detail of when it should be done, how it should be done. It's a, uh, uh, down to the details of when they should gather, what should be the reciting, what poem they should be reciting, what verse of the Quran they should be reciting. It is a manual, very detailed manual. And says they should get after duha prayer, after they have done all the zikr, and uh, etc., etc., and they have prayed their duha prayers, now they are getting for this act of ibadah. Or after Maghrib prayer, again he says, that you go through your birth of the day, etc., etc., and then he, uh, you zikr, your Quranic recitation, and then you get together for, for this sama. Then he says, if, uh, how do you listen to it? He says, if the Qawwal utters poetry in which there is a reference to the cheek, or mole or stature, it is to be applied to the cheek and mole or the stature of the Prophet ﷺ. Don't let any other ideas come to your mind. This is a requirement for his permission. He, he is actually making it a totally religious experience. I mean, regardless of whether other ulama have agreed with this thing either or not, and the, uh, most of those have not. But the point is that whatever he is proposing, whatever he is defending, using those very strong words, is not what is going on today. It is not for everybody. It is not for the youth at all. Uh, Imam Ghazali and his brother Ahmed Ghazali also are very, very clear on this thing. Whatever they are permitting is not for the youth. It's not for the women. And I'll read their exact quotes uh, in just a minute. Then he uh, also says, uh, regarding in instruments, that's a big issue. And he is agreeing, surprisingly, Ahmad Ghazali, the very strong defender of Sama, very strong proponent of music in Islam, as they say, actually is saying, as for the instruments of diversion, malahi, they are all forbidden by common consent. This is coming from whom? From Ahmad Ghazali, who is supposed to be a very strong supporter of Sama. He's saying, such as the harp, junk, which has a convex uh, brass plates that, that are struck to, together. The while the rabab, there's a board string. The luth, the, the, or oud, the plucked string instrument with four wires with a neck and deep round back. The Persian luth, barbat, the reed pipe, mizmar, with the exception of a tambourine or duf. So he is actually agreeing with the most of the ulama who have opposed music, that their musical instruments are haram, and he is actually saying the same thing here. The second thing he says, in the gathering, No beardless boy should be in the gathering when this sama is going on. And there should be no woman in this gathering, and there should not even be a possibility that a woman from outside can, could look through a window on this gathering. 
There should be no opening through which a woman outside the gathering could look at it. Women are completely excluded. Even they are looking at this thing is completely excluded. Boys are completely excluded. This is Ahmed Ghazali. Although our friends, the Orientalists, have very happily reproduced his Risala to show that there is an unbridgeable gap between the proponents and opponents of music in Islam. This was done by James Robson. Uh, he was an Orientalist in the UK, published in 1938. He did very hard work to actually show that he said tracks on listening to music. And what he did was publish two ris risalas, two epistles, one from Ibn Abi Dunya, Zamul Malahi, which is clearly uh, uh, condemning mu music. And then he puts against that this risala of uh, Bawariq al Ilma from Imam Ahmad Ghazali to show that how different they are and how opposed to each other they are. But if you look deeper, you find out that in the details they are all together. So he's saying, as I said, yeah, no. Uh, uh, young men, no women, no, no instruments except duf. That's all that's, that's for, permitted. You go to Imam Ghazali, his Deen is also quoted very uh, frequently, and people say Imam Ghazali said it's approved, so it's approved. End of discussion. I've heard it from so many people. But look at what Imam Ghazali is saying. He's, he's saying, He's putting these conditions. Uh, let me read actually from here. He, he says there are five conditions. They are related to the problems with the singer, the instruments, the text, and the listener. If any of those are there, then the summer that, Ahmad, uh, that Imam Ghazali is proposing so is not permitted. His can, his permission is also very conditional. The first thing is, it is not permissible to listen to a non-mehram woman. Woman singer is excluded. The same applies to a beardless boy. The reason is, in both cases, is that it may excite lust. The second thing is, Imam Ghazali's second condition is that all instruments associated with wine drinkers, fasiqs, and muhannas, muhannas, effeminate men, basically they were the professional singers of the time. So, in any instruments that are used by professional singers are excluded. They are not allowed by Imam Ghazali. So, all instruments used by wine drinkers or fasiqs or the professional singers are excluded. This includes wind and string instruments as well as drums. This is Imam Ghazali. The third thing is the text of the uh, poetry that they are uh, reading. And he says, songs that contain obscenity, lewdness, satire, or lies about Allah, Jalla Jalalu, his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the companions are prohibited. So, te text has to be clean; otherwise, it is not permitted. And people are using this to actually justify all kinds of texts. A song describing the beauty of a woman is also prohibited. Imam Ghazali is saying that. Then there is a problem with the singer when he, uh, with the listener. When he is young, because then lust is predominant in him. He explains, there is a constant war. This is Imam Ghazali. There is a constant war going on in the heart between the forces of shaitan, that is lust, and the party of Allah, that is the light of intellect. Most harsh today, and today is referring to Imam Ghazali's time, he says, have been conquered by the forces of shaitan. If that was his observation about his time, 
what would be his observation about our time? Just think about it. He says, most of the hearts have been conquered by the forces of shaitan. For such a person, sama is equivalent to sharpening the swords of shaitan. This sama that he is otherwise uh, permitting will be like sharpening the swords of shaitan. He must leave the sama gathering because it will only hurt him. This is the young man. Sorry, sorry all the youth. Imam Ghazali's permission does not apply to you. And when all of these conditions are met that he put there, there's another condition. That the right people are there, the right text is there, the right instruments are there, the singer is only that, that is allowed. And he says even in that case, excessive indulgence in Sama will turn him into an impudent person whose testimony is to be rejected. So you cannot, with all that, get too much involved in Sama. This has to be very, very limited. And he gives an example. Just as minor sins, sins turn into major sins due to persistence, similarly, some permissible acts turn into sins through excessive involvement in them. These are Imam Ghazali's words. And then he explains, he gives a very beautiful example. He says, a small mole adds to the beauty of the face. But too many moles destroy it. So his limited permission is like just a small mole on the face. Similarly, a little bit of amusement is good, but too much of it is ugly and prohibited. It's coming not from the camp that opposes music, it is coming from the camp which supposedly is supporting it. And he's saying, sorry, you cannot do that. And the, the, the next one I will quote was Abdul Ghani Nablusi. He is a later uh, uh, scholar and uh, very, very strong proponent, uh, proponent of Sama. But he has given the uh, 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 same uh, uh, opinions. He says, listening to Malahi like beating with a stick is haram. Coming from Abdul Ghani Abdul Nablusi. The messenger said, oh, listening to Malahi is sin. This is his, his quoting. Sitting for it is transgression and enjoying it is kufr, that is ingratitude, because putting our organs to the uses for which they were not recreated is ingratitude. It's kufr, not shukri. So it is obligatory, totally obligatory, that one should refrain from such listening. And again, he also says, Sama is haram for the youth and all those on whom their desires and pursuits of pleasure have taken hold. The love of this world controls them, and whose inner selves have been muddied, recommended for the Sufi, it is only recommended for the Sufi, overwhelmed by the love of Allah, Sama excites only the desirable attributes in him. So his limited Sama is again only for them, otherwise it's not permitted. Then he says at another place, we say that Sama falls in three categories. The first is Haram. And this is for the majority of people, from the youth and all those on whom their desires and pursuits of pleasure have taken hold, the love of this world controls them, and whose inner selves have been muddied and their goals have been corrupted. Sama does not excite in them except the base qualities that are dominant in them and in their hearts. This is especially true in our times with the corruption of our states and our deeds. He also says at another place, when accompanied by precursors to sins, like looking with desire at other women, or even a desire for it in the imagination of the audience, then Sama is prohibited. 
And again, like Imam Ghazali and he, like Ahmad Ghazali, he says, if all the conditions are met, then the last conditions remain that if it is free from all prohibited things that he has prohibited and safe from all suspicions, then, it, then the other condition is it's not made a habit of during most of the time. So even with that condition, it has to be something very, very limited. Now the, the thing to think about is that uh, this limit has been removed by the machines. They were talking at a time when machines were not there. A real live person had to sing. And of course they could not sing 24 hours a day. The problem with the machines has been that they have actually destroyed all the boundaries. We just heard in the social media also, these machines that we have, the gadgets, the phones, uh, 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 laptops, tablets, whatever, they have destroyed the boundaries. Your four walls do not protect you. They go beyond that. And that's a big problem. Total strangers can come in your house, talk to your ch children, talk to your sp spouse, and you don't even know. They can have long conversations. Boundaries have been totally destroyed. And similarly, with the machines, the music boundaries were destroyed, that there was no limit on time. The machine can be playing the music all the time, and it is playing all the time. So, even when their other conditions were met, this condition could not be met in the presence of these machines. So, the, the net result is that whatever they proposed, and they gave some arguments for those, and I have dealt with those arguments, and the, the answers to those arguments uh, in, in my book. You, you can find all the details there. I'm not going through that. And that's why the majority of the ulama did not even agree with this much. But whatever they proposed, does it put a halal stamp on the music that goes on today? What do you think? Is there any chance we can say, okay, well, brother, don't say it's haram because Ghazali said it's permitted. Ahmed Ghazali said it's permitted. Abdul Ghani Khan Abdulsi said it's permitted. What they permitted is not what is going on today. All the conditions that they put are totally violated right from the beginning. And the, 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 that, that is a general problem that sometimes we want to defend something, support something. So you, you just extract a statement from some alim uh, a long time ago and forget everything else that they had said. The hadith, for example, that uh, permitted women to go to the masjid. And there is a hadith which says, uh, don't stop your women from going to the masjid. It also put the condition that they should not put any perfume. All the ulama that actually supported that also put this condition. There should be no per perfume. They should have no attract attractiveness about them. They should be completely covered. And what happens today is that people actually take this one hadith and forget the condition that is right there. And similarly, the same thing is happening here. So I say it's nothing but hypocrisy. If you want to quote uh, uh, Ghazali or his brother Ahmed Ghazali or Abdul Ghanim no, Maghdisi, then quote it uh, truthfully, honestly, with all the conditions. And when you put those conditions, you'll find out that whatever is going on today in the uh, in the music scene, the Muslim music scene also, is not approved by any one of them. So the controversy is a controversial subject? Yeah, but it's really not. There's a huge consensus underneath that con controversy, and that's what actually I wanted to bring you up here. Uh, if there are any questions, I can take that, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Yeah. <laughs> nashis depend again. There is a whole spectrum of nashis. There are nashis which are just actually copying uh, the other secular songs, uh, film songs. Um, uh, they're, they're following their tunes, they're following everything, and they just have those some good words in them. Uh, this is just fooling ourselves. Uh, 
one place Imam Ghazali mentions that if uh, there is a, a, you arrange a gathering which is the, exactly like the gathering of uh, wine drinkers you, you have the um, server there you have the same utensils you, you have the entire same setup and you serve lemon juice in it then it will still be haram because you are following actually the uh, the model that you're following is haram. So he mentions that in here. Uh, it's a good example. So in, in the sheet that actually follows in every detail those uh, prohibited songs and then just in words is nasheed that, that will not be any different from the other ones. But the other nasheeds which are very good. They, they can re really stimulate your heart, increase your love for Allah and for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, uh, and we should be using them. Although, even those should not be used excessively as everyone has said. That there should be limit. It's not that they go on all the time. Yes. Any other question? Yes. Yeah, that is a question to be answered by the fuqaha. I have listed what they have said. Uh, but uh, the, uh, as I quoted from these people, from uh, Amal Ghazali and Ghazali and Abdul Ghali Maqdisi, they have actually opposed most of the instruments, the wind instruments, the stringed instruments, the percussion instruments, with some exceptions. They said, like, duf is halal for them. And other ulama have said, duf is only halal, in uh, uh, a wedding and not uh, all the time. So there is some disagreement there and then for th those details we can go, go to the ulama, to, uh, the fuqha to, to uh, get uh, the real answers. But what goes on today again is something that uh, disregards even what they, they said. They're not reading uh, Ghazali uh, to actually g get their guidance for what they should be doing. They're just reading a quote from Ghazali which says, he said it's okay. And then they, they go on their own way. Any other questions? Y yes. Yeah. yeah, the question is about Talheen. Talheen is uh, uh, like Maqam Asra reading the Quran in musical tones. Uh, uh, again, I have a discussion on that uh, in this book. Uh, and uh, the, 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 there, I think uh, there is a good quote from Abdul, ba Abdul Basit Abdul Samad. Uh, let me find and read that to you. But, because he was the expert and he is the authority on this subject. And uh, what he said, uh, uh, yeah, page 267. He summarizes it very beautifully. Uh, okay. Uh, this is from Sheikh Khalil Mahmoud al Husri. He says, Tajweez spurts from the Quran and Talheen is an addition to it. Tajweed. He is comparing tajweed, which is actually reciting the Quran, the correct pronunciation, which is required, which is very important. But he said, tajweed spurts from the Quran and Talheen is an addition to it. If he were to permit it, then adding words to the Quran will also be permissible. That's his position. The whole, uh, 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 Sheikh Abdul Wahab Sha'arani says, to those of our friends who would listen to us, we should stop them from reciting the Quran in more. This is Abdul Wahab Sha'arani is a Sufi master. He says, to those of our friends who would listen to us, we, would, we should stop them from reciting the Quran in modes that are against the rules delineated by the pious predecessors. This also applies to giving the azan and saying the takbir behind the imam. They, they should not be in those musical terms. Uh, and uh, uh, th this is the quote from Sheikh Abdul Qadir Atta. He says, 
what we are witnessing in Egypt today is the, in the gatherings of people around a qari who engage in talheen, what we hear from the shouts and noises asking for a repetition affirms that these masses are not asking for a repeat of and are not delighted with anything but music and singing. As for the Quran, they are totally isolated from it. They scream with delight equally, listen to it, they scream with delight equally when they hear the verses of admonishment or the verses of reward. Jahannam is mentioned and they are delighted. Jannah is mentioned and they are delighted because they are listening to the music. They are not paying any attention to the Quran. They make no difference between the verses talking about hell and those talking about heaven. In this act, there is such disrespect, dis disrespect for the Quran that calls for prohibition of such listening and attendance of such gatherings. So, I, I hope that this answers some of the questions about... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, Qari Abdul Basit Abdul Samad, I mentioned, this is his quote. He says, when a person attempts to follow the rules of music for any musical note in the recitation of a Quranic verse, it is a given, it is a given that he will violate the rules of Tajweed. And if he decides to follow the rules of Tajweed, it is a given that he will violate the rules of music. So very clear, you have to follow the rules of Tajweed you can either follow these completely, or you can follow these completely. There may be some common area, a little bit. Within Tajweed, if you can have some maqam, then some people allow it. But if you are dedicated to this, Talheen, it is definite that, according to Abdul Basit Abdul Samad, ta'ala, that you are going to violate the rules of Tajweed. And therefore, it will not be permissible. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I have written something on that <laughs> also in this book. They, they, uh, the, the thing is that these becomes gray areas. How, how far you go if you are following exactly Yeah, the thing is, what is actually driving that? Because ultimately, if you are producing, and you are such an expert that you produce the same sound that a stringed instrument is going to produce, then what difference does it make that it was not the stringed instrument but your own throat that produced it? The real factor that determines whether it is permitted or not is the effect it has on you. They call it tarab. If, if tarab is there, this is prohibited. And so, if you produce it through these instruments or this instrument, copying those instruments, that result is the same, so the, I think the ruling should also be the same. Yes? Auto? I, I don't understand that. Uh, so it's similar to uh, what was asked here. I mean, using your throat actually to, to produce uh, the, the sounds that otherwise are produced by instruments. So, uh, what is driving that? That's the real issue. You're trying to imitate those things. So keep in mind uh, Imam Ghazali's example of that lemonade party, which is exactly copying the wine party. Wine drinkers getting together. So your heart is in there. And you're just trying to be technically correct. This thing is not about being technically correct. It's being spiritually correct. So you're really correct in your heart. So if your heart is set in copying them, and you do your best in copying them, then uh, you're not very different from them. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. So what, what about the staff? Yeah. I, I will leave that question to be answered by the qualified muftis. I, I'm not. I'm, what, I, what I have done here actually is read all the books that were available, summarize them, arrange them in a nice way. That's, that's my area. Other questions are above my pay gra uh, grade. So I'm not going to answer those. Yeah. Yes. Poetry? Oh, sure. Po poetry, my first chapter here is about poetry. And in poetry, the basic rule is that whatever is good in it is good, what is bad in it is bad. Depends on its text, well, what, what the message is. If the, if the text is bad, it is prohibited and it's condemned. And there are ahadis that condemn it. And the other ahadis actually encourage the poets to defend Islam. And there were poets actually, who actually were using their poetry in the defense of Islam. They were doing jihad with their poetry. So, so it will all depend on what actually is being said. But basically, intrinsically, poetry is not p prohibited, but it depends, solely depends on uh, its contents. Yeah. Yes? Why is that? Yeah, yeah, th that's a very good question. I think it was answered yesterday by Dr. Mateen about the Muslim spaces and non-Muslim spaces. That is a framework that works very well here. In non-Muslim spaces, what do you do? You do try your best to influence them too. If you can talk to them to stop it, you know, maybe you can do that. And if, it, if it's an Islamic school, that you should have more leeway in actually telling them that uh, you, you do have serious objection to that. Uh, at your workplace, you have no control over that. It's coming from music or what, whatever. And they piped in music. They just want that because they think the cow will give more milk with, with that music. They will not stop it. But you, you, you can basically tune off yourself for, from that. Put your... Uh, mind to other things, so you're not listening to it. You're not, actually, we are not sinful if it happens with, uh, this, despite our efforts. We, we have no intention, we have no desire, but it, it's beyond our control. And uh, th there was a, an example, uh, one hadith that Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar was going, and he heard the sound of a flute. Uh, some uh, shepherd was playing it, some in the distance. And he closed his ears, but he asked his son, uh, someone who was with him, to tell him when it stopped, so he can go back on the path. This is a famous hadith, agreed by everyone, and both sides actually try to use it to justify their position. But it's very clear that uh, the other person was not asked to put his ears, uh, his fingers in the ears, or close his ears. So that means it is not totally obligatory to close your ears at your work. You, you're not required to sit like this throughout the day. But uh, you, you can tune yourself out. That will be good. Oh, we have, I think, four minutes left. I was told. Yes. Is there any type of recommended taking point or position that uh, music is being played and you cannot control it? Yeah, I think all zikrs that, uh, are good. And the zikrs that you actually more used to, it will be easy to do that under those times. Because a new zikr will be more difficult. You'll forget it because music will interfere. But the things that I actually used to, uh, I have found it. It's so easy to just continue with that zikr. So just use that. I mean, there should be some zikr that is goes on all the time. And if that is in our mind, it will stick there too. They say, uh, I mean, you cannot get it out of your mind. It happens with music. It can also happen with the words of Quran. In fact, I just listened, uh, read something very, very inspiring from Mufti Ibn Adam Qasri. He said his father is 86 years old and he just got stroke. He is bedridden. 
and he heard his father who cannot move at all in his sleep his father was reciting surah mulk at a stage when he's totally disabled completely and he's sleeping but even his probably he cannot even speak but in his sleep he was reciting surah mulk because he, he was used to it doing it all his life it automatically comes to, to his lips so if we have that kind of connection with the quran or with the zikr inshallah it will help us in those difficult moments too and yes Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are many ahadith. Clearly, prohibits what the point coming from one side to the other side. Why we start to say it's not true? Yeah. Again, I mean, that requires a whole long discussion, and that discussion is in the book. I'm not trying to sell the book, but maybe it's in the library. You can pick it up from there and read it. But, but the thing is, the hadith of Bukhari, for example. We say uh, the people will come later on who will try to justify. Uh, 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 haram things by calling them something else, and uh, they will also be in, in engaged in balahi and mazamir. That's very, very, very clear on this subject. The thing is that some music, under very limited conditions, was permitted. The the, uh, the one in uh, we weddings or on uh, on Eid. So th they gave this much permission, and the others actually tried to extend it. And just take it all the way, so that's why this discussion has been there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you find the Quranic uh, ayat and the interpretation. Quran does not say music is not a word that is used in the Quran or the Hadith, but the, the, the words are malahi, mazamir, and uh, you, you find uh, references to them both in Quran and Hadith and the tafsir, which says that this actually refers to the mazamir, and they are actually prohibited. And their practice of the Sahaba. How many Sahaba? What did they do? They even said that if you break somebody else's musical instruments, there is no liability on you. Why would they do that? Otherwise, you cannot break somebody else's property um, without liability. You will be liable. But they said it has no value, it, so it can be broken. And they actually used to break it. Yes. Sir. Oh, okay, I, I think we are all done. Jazakallah <laughs> khair.